If humans are ever going to be strong enough to explore the Martian surface, they'll need some other help. Dr. Randall Urban is looking for something that can stimulate muscle and bone growth in the absence of gravity. And he's turned his attention to a chemical that's well known for building your body. Well, testosterone is a very interesting hormone, and it seems to be primarily responsible for protection of bone and protection of muscle. Dr. Urban is working with the test subjects on bed rest, including Frank and Daniel. He's giving regular injections of testosterone to half of the subjects who are exercising. It's a double-blind study, and no one knows yet who's getting the testosterone and who isn't. We see that one of the exercise groups is doing much better than the other exercise group. Uh, in our minds, we think that may be the testosterone group which is showing that benefit. Daniel doesn't know whether he's received the testosterone or not. He'll just keep on running and having his bone and muscle mass monitored until his 70 days are up. The results of the study will help determine whether astronauts traveling to Mars will take doses of testosterone to keep their bones and muscles strong. But testosterone is not without risks. It's a steroid and the primary male sex hormone. There will undoubtedly be women among the future astronauts. When we use testosterone in women, we have to be very concerned about the uh, side effects, which actually will cause them uh, to, to develop male characteristics. It remains to be seen whether women can take enough testosterone to remain strong without acquiring beards and deep voices. There are also concerns about the emotional health of competitive men taking steroids in a confined space. But the health risks of traveling to Mars don't just threaten the body. Perhaps the greatest challenge of all is in the mind. Imagine you're one of the astronauts and you've now been on board for several months in the same small space with the same few people. You've played all the games on your tablet and the view out of the window never changes. You may start to feel a little bored, perhaps a little glum, and this is important not just because it's nice to be happy. Having a functioning team on a spaceship can be a matter of life and death. If you become depressed in space flight, if you develop a poor interaction style, or you become socially isolated because something's wrong and your, your brain can't cope or your behavior's off, or you become cognitively impaired, then you pose a risk to yourself and the rest of the crew in the mission. Dr. Dingus wants to use the spacecraft's onboard cameras to watch over the astronauts day and night. I want to review sort of uh, what we've got. OK, so get position, center yourself. On your... Dr. Dinges and his team are using new facial recognition software to identify signs in the face that betray what the mind beyond is really thinking. Well, number one, for just tracking purposes, the jawline really helps to you know where the face is oriented. Number two, we need the lips, because the lips tell a lot about frowns, smiles. And then we need the eyes. The eyes are hugely expressive in humans. Um, Chris, give us just neutral here. And just, uh, you know, think about um, just work or whatever you're doing and nothing, nothing particularly important. Even if an astronaut's overall emotional health is fine, his or her powers of concentration may deteriorate. We discovered that the most reliable measure, better than brainwave, was speed of the eyelid closure, the levator palpebrae muscle in the eyelid. And that's what these little green boxes are tracking. And as we get more tired, no matter what we're doing, the speed of the eyelid um, blink slows. Now, it's only slowing in 100, 200, 300 thousandths of a second. So it's almost not visible to a human. But in this case, the computer can measure it with a great deal of precision. And that means you're highly likely to have a lapse of attention. But is it overkill to design a machine to do a job so instinctive for humans? Now, you could argue, well, can't a human just do it then? Better to have a machine do it, 
with an algorithm, then it feeds it back in aggregate, and then a human can say, give me that section of the mission right here, and give me this astronaut, and let me, what's going on here? Because we saw a big spike here. Even if your muscles and bones could be kept strong in zero gravity, and if your mind could be kept alert and happy for a year with little stimulation, they would still remain a powerful threat to your survival. Radiation. The cosmic rays from deep space are constant. A solar storm sends out gamma rays, X-rays, and particles strong enough to kill. So one important factor of, of, of actually life on Earth and how we were able to evolve is that we're protected from the radiation of galactic cosmic rays and from the radiation of the sun by the magnetic field of the Earth, which is caused by the iron core of the Earth. That magnetic field creates a protective shield around our planet called the magnetosphere, which deflects radiation. The more dangerous solar particles don't get through, so that we mostly receive only life-giving sunshine. But out in space, everything is different. Out here, the bubbling surface of the sun occasionally builds to a huge explosion. These solar flares throw out massive bursts of radiation and high-energy protons, which might cause radiation sickness or damage your DNA, causing mutations and cancer later on. Fortunately, there's a way of dealing with this, shielding. Jeff Saro is investigating the best materials to absorb radiation. So we're looking at taking a garment and filling it with water, which you see uh, a first concept of here of this astronaut with uh, a water wall built into its wearable garment. So this is something that you fill for an event and you're not really charging the system the penalty of carrying all this mass. You need the water anyways for drinking, for contingency water. So, so he gets protection in maybe uh, a different form but with a lot less mass penalty to it. Doubling up on function Using materials that would be on board anyway is an idea that Jeff is enthusiastic about. We're trying to look at protecting astronauts using the logistics that you already have on hand. So there's food items that we have in these bags that unfold to form a wall. If you put a wall against uh, the outside surface, you're trying to place all these items between the astronaut and the radiation uh, event outside. So the more items you can put between him and that, you know, you attenuate the radiation, the safer he'll be during this 36-hour solar particle event. With warning of a solar storm, astronauts can seek shelter. Cosmic rays, however, are never ending, and an astronaut cannot hide from them. Galactic cosmic rays are high energy particles from distant exploding stars. By affecting the growth of brain cells, they can induce memory loss in an astronaut after just six months in space. The best solution is to have people who are less susceptible to their effects. There is a theoretical possibility that we could find some genetic markers of people who are less susceptible to the, the kinds of damage that occur during radiation. It's too early uh, in any of our research program to be able to, to speculate on that, but it's certainly a theoretical possibility, and it's one that we'll be investigating over the next few years of our program. 